All right, so I'm going to walk us through. These are four accounts that I'm just going to be reading with you. These are the four accounts that are uh, depicted in the Mission U.S. Part 4 game from bad to worse. It takes place March 5th of 1770, a day that we've already looked at. And uh, we know what happens, but here are four primary source accounts and I'm going to be reading through with you. A primary source account means it was done from the day. This is somebody who was there. On the left-hand side, I've got some words. Whoa. I've got a word here, standing. And then on this side, I've got underlined having taken his station. So as I'm over here on the standing, that is another way to say having taken the station. And that's how I'm going to get that all set up for us. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to start reading. This is account number one, an anonymous account, so we don't know who wrote it, of the Boston Massacre. Benjamin Friesel on the evening of March 5th, having taken his station, we know that means standing, near the west corner of the Customs House in King Street, before and at the time of the soldiers firing their guns, declares, amongst other things, that the first discharge, so the first shot, was only of one gun, and next of two guns, upon which the deponent thinks, so that's upon which Ben, Ben thinks he heard one gun, and then he heard two guns, and he thinks he saw a man stumble, the third discharge, so the third time they were shot, were three guns. So he's heard three people shooting so far. Upon which he thinks he saw two men fall, and immediately after was charged five guns, two of which were by soldiers on his right, and the other three appeared to Ben were discharged from the balcony or the chamber window of the customs house. The flashes appeared on the left hand and higher than the right hand flashes appeared to be, of which the deponent, Ben, was very sensible, although his eyes were much turned to the soldiers who were all on his right hand. So I'm going to summarize this again here. Ben was standing near the customs house. He heard soldiers fire five times. The first time, he only heard one gun. The second time, he heard two guns, and he thinks he saw a man stumble. So maybe he was shot. The third discharge, third time he heard the guns, was three guns, and he thinks two more people fell. And then immediately they fired again, and five guns, he thinks, two of which were by the soldiers, and three, he thinks, were by a window. So the colonists were firing back. That's the first account. All right. I feel a sneeze coming on, and that's just... Excuse me, that's no good. Account number two. This was written by George Robert Twelves Hughes. He was a witness at the time. We have another underlined word here, and there it's defined for us on this side. Upon receiving the message, Captain Preston came immediately with a small guard of grenadiers, soldiers, and paraded them before the customs house, where the British officers were shut up. Captain Preston then ordered the people to disperse, to leave. But they said they would not. They were in the King's Highway. They were on the street and has as good a reason to be there as he did. The captain of the guard then said to them, if you do not disperse, I will fire on you. And he told his men to get ready. Immediately, he gave them two orders to fire. Three of our citizens fell dead on the spot and two were wounded. They died the next day and nine were also wounded. So Robert here, George Robert, he's got a different viewpoint, doesn't he? He thinks he only heard he only heard one, one being shot, but more people fell. So a different amount of shooting from our first and our second person. <laughs> Account number three, a report in the Boston Gazette and Country Journal an account of late military massacre at Boston, or the consequences of quartering troops in a town, March 12th. So this is in a newspaper, and this was written about eight days after. We have a lot more underlined words, and so we've got some more definitions for us to help out. Here's the newspaper account. 30 or 40 people, 
mostly lads, were being in this means gathered in King Street. Captain Preston, with a party of men were charged bayonets, came from the main guard to the commissioner's house, the soldiers pushing their bayonets, crying, Make way! They took place by the customs house, and continuing to push to drive the people off, pricked some in several places, on which they were clamorous, and, it is said, threw snowballs. What does that mean? They drove the people off and stabbed at some in different places. This caused people to get angry, and it said they threw snowballs. Oh. On this, the captain commanded them to fire, and more snowballs coming again, he said, Damn you, fire, be the consequence what it will. One soldier then fired, and a townsman with a crudgel, which is a short or heavy club, a townsman struck him over the hands with such force he dropped his firelock, his gun. Rushing forward, he aimed a blow at the captain's head, which grazed the hat and fell pretty heavy on his head, on his arm. So the hat, he hit him on the head with a stick, and the hat fell off, and it landed on his arm. However, the soldiers continued to fire successively till eight, or some say eleven, guns were discharged. So right now, this seems a little bit more similar to our first story when they talked about five different times the guns were being fired, and there were a lot more guns in the first story than there were in the second story. So our first and third story seem to be a little bit more in common. This is the same story. Well, that's all of it. Hmm. Account number four. A deposition. So this is in court of Captain Preston. Captain Preston's the guy who's in charge of the British soldiers. This is what he says. He says, I immediately sent a non-commissioned officer and 12 men to protect both the sentry and the king's money, and very soon followed myself to present, if possible, all disorder, fearing lest the officer and soldiers, by the insults and provocations of the rioters, should be thrown off their guard and commit some rash act. This sentence, another way to say it, in more modern terms, the captain of the guard sent some soldiers to protect the king's property, and he was afraid that the rioters were going to start to cause problems, so he sent more soldiers. They soon rushed through the people and charging their bayonets in half circles kept them at a distance. Nay, so far was I from intending the death of any person that I suffered the troops to go on the spot. So another way to say it, he had so little intention of causing anybody's death that he allowed the troops to go to the spot where the unhappy affair took place without loading in their pieces. Without loading in their pieces, so their guns are empty. Nor did I give orders for loading them. This remiss conduct in me perhaps merits censure. So he, this sentence, this careless behavior may deserve criticism. He's trying to say that he sent his soldiers without any bullets in the gun and he might get in trouble for doing that. Yet it's evidence resulting of the nature of my things, which by the best and surest that can be offered, that my intention was not to act offensively, but the contrary part, and not without compulsion. Another way to say this, he was determined not to act offensively. He didn't want to cause any issues, he's saying. The mob still increased and were more outrageous, striking their clubs and bludgeons against one another and calling out, Come, you rascals, you bloody backs, you lobster scoundrels, fire if you dare. God damn you, fire and be damned, we know you dare not, and much more such language was used. Well, the last account also mentioned a club, so so far those two have this in common. At this time I was between the soldiers and the mob, parlaying with and endeavoring in all my power to persuade them to retire peacefully with no purpose. He tried to speak with them, to persuade them to go away, but he didn't get anywhere. They advanced to the points of the baronets, struck some of them, even muzzles of the pieces, and seemed to be endowing to close with the soldiers. On which, at this point, some well-behaved people I just lost my place. On which some well-behaved people asked me if the guns were discharged. I replied, yes. They then asked me if I had intended the 
order the men to fire? I answered, no, by no means. Observing to them, I was advancing before the muzzle's pieces and must sacrifice if they fired. So he said that he was in front of the soldiers. So if the soldiers did fire, the bullet would hit him. He was between the rioters, Captain Preston, and the British soldiers. So if they fire, the bullet goes all the way through Mr. Preston. The soldiers were upon the half cock and discharged bayonets. So their gun is almost loaded. It's halfway loaded. And my giving the word to fire under those circumstances would prove me to be no officer. While I was thus speaking, one of the soldiers, having received a severe blow with a stick, that was mentioned in the one above. So that has this in common too. So far, he seems to be kind of telling the truth, I think. Stepped a little on one side and instantly fired, on which turning to him asked why he fired without orders. I was struck with a club on my arm, which for some reason deprived me the time of the use of it. Which blow had it been placed on my head probably would have destroyed me. So a soldier fired. He turned around and asked why he did that. And as he turned around, he was hit on the arm. And he was hit so hard that his arm went numb. He says that if he was hit on the head, he probably would have died. On this, a general attack was made by the men by a great number of heavy clubs and with snowballs being thrown at them by which the lives were in imminent danger. Some persons at the same time from behind calling out, damn you bloodbeds, why don't you fire? Somebody was taunting them. Instantly, three or four of the soldiers fired, one after another, and directly after three more in the same confusion and hurry. So now he's kind of this story seems like it's got bits and pieces of everything else doesn't it because now they fired twice the mob then ran away except three unhappy men who instantly expired in which one number was mr gray at whose rope walk the prior quarrels took place one more is since dead three others are dangerously and four slightly wounded the whole melancholy affair was transacted in 20 minutes on my asking the soldiers why they fired without orders, they said they heard the word to fire and supposed it came from me. So he asked his soldiers afterwards why they fired, and they said, well, somebody said fired. This might be the case, as many of the mob called out, fire, fire. But I assure you that the men, I gave no such order, that my words were, don't fire, stop your firing. In short, it was scarcely possible for the soldiers to know who said fire or don't fire or stop your firing. So Captain Preston's account here, account number four, besides having some words and language we don't really say, Captain Preston's account has little bits and pieces of everything else, doesn't it? So our Captain Preston talks about multiple rounds being fired, multiple times they fired the gun. He talks about how somebody said fire, but he doesn't know who. He talks about how he was hit on the arm by a club he talks about people who were causing issues and problems let's review our account number three the one in the newspaper this also has somebody being hit with a club somebody aiming a a, a blow at the captain's head but it hit his arm the captain said that too and soldiers firing then. Account number two talks about Captain Preston going to the house, Captain Preston telling people to go away, and Captain Preston firing. So on our second account, Captain Preston's the one who said fire. But in his account, he says he doesn't know. In our first account, to summarize our first account, we've got it from Ben, and he says he heard multiple firings, multiple guns being uh, fired, and the colonists firing back. So four different perspectives, four different stories that we saw. All right, another video is going to talk about the instructions and what we're doing with this. This one's just uh, all about our four accounts. So, super awesome.